I've had the Stromer ST5 for two days now and I've already been driving just for work, you know, and in total 100 kilometers. There's some just some small trips. Today I'm planning to go on a huge trip. Probably gonna exhaust the battery in one trip. Um, hopefully I'm getting 80 kilometers out of it. We'll see. Um, with the SD2, it has never been a problem. There's some things I'd like to share about this bike. Well, it does take long to, to start up, first of all. That's a little bit annoying, but the good thing is it, there's much improvements in the Omni. Basically, when you put it somewhere, you don't really have to switch it off. It will go like kind of a sleep mode when you walk away with your phone, it will lock. That works really well. It works fantastic. When you walk, when you walk towards it, it will actually turn on the display right away and you will see, oh, it works. And as soon as you arrive at the bike, it will turn the lights on. Like it's, the timing is great. Obviously, it's just when you got in the range of the Bluetooth, it will start turning off. I'm turning on, I mean. And the headlights, it, it feels so safe to, to drive right on the street. You can just drive in the middle of the street, in the middle of the night, you feel safe. This headlight is a beast. And if you just want that extra safety when going down a, a really dark road, curvy, maybe mountain road, just turn on that bright headlight and it, you'll be seen for sure. Um, since I got this bike, this is actually my first new bike that I got brand new out of the store. All my other bikes, when I was a child, the bikes that I got as a child, they were all used or they never had clean chains. So when I bought it, I was amazed how, how clean this chain is and the chain ring. I've never seen something like that. But you can just see that in a bike store, not even, you know, it's just shiny. Now obviously it's used. I clean it today and I learned how to professionally clean it just because uh, I didn't know it could get that clean. I just used to clean it with a brush and it would never get clean, really clean. But yeah, I didn't know chains could be as clean as that. I'm an amateur, I guess. But this bike really puts a new standard. It's amazing. It makes, with old e-bikes, I just wanted to get it, uh, get my ass to work, you know, just get me there, come on already. I had a flyer before from my father and some old no-name e-bikes. -E and I just wanted them to, to get my ass around, around town, but yeah, I wouldn't do anything to pedal, you know, I just wanted it to propel my ass because it's not fun. This bike is fun to drive. I actually find myself doing much more exercise on this one, even though it's much faster, because it's just so much fun. I want to go out. I'm looking for excuses to go outside, drive the bike. Yeah, it makes me look for excuses because it's just so much fun. And it goes up to 45 kilometers per hour. That's 28 miles per hour. Insanely fast. And to get it a little higher, which is still, it doesn't cut off right away. It goes to 48 easily. And then after that, it will cut off. But just so slightly that you actually can pedal more. And it feels like, yeah, it feels just great. So that's a good work uh, on Stromer's side. What happened to me is um, this display actually got loose. It's like wiggling around and actually popping out on the top. So that's the downside. I was I was scared, like what the hell? But obviously it's under warranty or whatever, just in case something bad. When I called, they just told me to, on the bottom here, there's the on off switch. Just screw that in. It will actually tighten the display and that works. So that's good to know about your own bike. Uh, probably because I took it on a mountain bike trail on the first day and from transport it might have wiggled itself loose so it's not a big deal yeah 
I also had some scratching on the front wheel because the disc brakes were not ideally adjusted. So when I turned the wheel, it's like shh, 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 gives you that sound when it touches the, the brakes. But centering it will solve the problem or just taking good care of it while transporting. So, yeah, that's the bike. I think for people who don't really enjoy, who would like to drive the bike, but don't have the stamina to do it, to do so, it's again a good choice, you know. It will actually, yeah, get you outside, get you climbing mountains with it, and it will give you a de decent workout. Especially downhill, you can turn on um, the, um, the recuperation mode, which will charge your battery. And if you want to, you can put it on the fullest level of recoup, and it will actually slow your bike down substantially, even going down steep hills you will slow down. So if you want to get an easy workout, you can just pedal to help charge the battery downhill, which looks funny, but it's actually, it feels really safe. With a normal bike, you use your brake pads. Here, down a mountain, you never use your brake pads. It's not even necessary. You can just use recoup, and you can adjust your sensors. When you tap the brakes, it will go into recoup mode, and you can adjust how much you want it to brake. Right now, I put it on the, ma the max brake power. So even just touching my brakes will actually use the motor to brake. It's, it's not enough to stop right away, but over like 10 or 20 meters, it will easily slow down from 50 down to 30, or from 30 down to 10, or yeah. Didn't do the math on that, but it feels like actual strong brakes on the max mode. Some people prefer it more uh, slightly so they can just slow down in traffic or something yeah the S mode is cool and I guess it's a slight upgrade to level number three especially when it comes to acceleration that's the whole point of it yeah compared to the ST2 it's not that much of a, a difference I can confirm what I read online that it's maybe a 10% boost over the ST2 in kind of raw performance. You can definitely feel those 10% because of the bigger, it's actually supposed to be 20%, but because of the bigger tires, the acceleration of the tire is slowed down or something. That's how I understand. So it's definitely not more than actual 10% of, of power that you can feel, but it's noticeable. It's definitely noticeable. It's, it's a dream of a bike. Can't wait to get out tonight. What I also did notice is when I'm driving on S mode or assist level 3 that it will actually vibrate quite a bit. The motor is mo even more quiet than the ST2's motor when you're driving. For example, in the forest, it's really noticeable because the surroundings kind of swallow your your audio, the sound you make while pedaling. This bike is silent. It's dead silent. It feels so cool. My father, for example, has a new mountain bike, which is amazing, with a Bosch Performance CX motor, but it's so noisy that when I drive next to him, I can not even hear my own driving the bike basically um, but it does vibrate I noticed um, the SD2 does make a louder noise it, it sounds like it's vibrating yes, the SD2 like a little zzz, like this obviously when um, using recoup mode that's what it does but when boosting this is completely silent but just between 40 and 50 kilometers per hour speed, um, it will like really, especially when there's headwind or a little hill, you can feel the motor working. It might be because of the, the seat post that is not stuck. It's the body float and just some 
uh, Chell saddle that I want to try because the other one is kind of rough and I like to go in the mountains. Uh, it might be because of this, that the vibrations is a little uh, enhanced, I don't know, but probably not. It doesn't bother me though, it's not that bad. It's just there's there's more vibration that you can feel from the motor than compared to the ST2. Yeah. To clean it and to maintain it, I guess I have a really I'm really lucky that I can just drive in my front door and park it in my apartment. I just there's no there's no plug, no outlet in the garage, and I don't want to pay for a parking spot or a garage that has an outlet. So I just park it here, right in my apartment. And when I want to clean it, I have a big balcony outside. I can just place it out there and clean it. So it's amazing. It's like I'm living with it, but it's um, expensive enough that that makes sense. You wouldn't want it stayed outside uh, let it outside for example in winter or in spring when there's pollen and everything sticking to the bike yeah then it's a, it's a downgrade so I, I want to keep it clean so that's about it enough talking if you have any questions let me know oh yeah some small thing the the rear mirror is it looks much better than the old one the old one is just flimsy and like when it wiggles it still moves for example when you go over the sidewalk or something and it vibrates it will actually move a little bit you could, obviously you can uh, uh, screw around on the side to make it stiffer but the design is much better but when you have your arm here You can, when you drive, you can kind of see part of your arm instead of the road. Obviously, you can adjust that so the angle is not really. But that's what you see. That's basically what you see on the road. It's like part of your arm because it's up higher. The old rear mirror you could put to the side more. But whatever, right? Um, it's bigger, so you can see more, anyways. So that's no big deal. Yeah, overall I'm so happy with this bike and I plan on driving it every day. Don't want a car. Who, who likes traffic anyways? Just um, get everywhere really fast with this. And I don't even have to lock it because it just locks itself.